Hi, and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at an idea called the mechanical equivalent of heat, which was, uh, well, actually determined by, by several people around the same time period, though the person who is typically given credit for this is a man named James Prescott Jewell. Uh, so the idea here is that uh, heat is a form of energy, and we can change the amount of heat something has by doing work on it. Um, it can just be included with our, our other energy transformations. So Prescott, uh, James Prescott Jewell um, came to, to understand this, or to verify this idea with this device. Uh, the idea with this was we have this uh, tank here that's filled with water, and inside the tank we have this cylinder with two paddles on either side. And then that cylinder extends out of the tank, and up here we have this string wrapped all the way around this cylinder. And then that string comes over this pulley, and we have this little weight. And that weight is going to be, um, uh, gravity is going to pull that, that mass downward. As it does, the string gets pulled out, and it causes this little cylinder to rotate, which makes this cylinder rotate, and the paddles move through the water. Additionally, uh, Jewel had a, a thermometer in the, the water here. And what he found was that if he raised the, uh, the weight just a little bit and let it come downward, so we just have a little bit of string being, uh, uh, being moved, and so you know, this, uh, this cylinder only moves a little bit. We have a little motion in here with the paddles. What he found was that the temperature of the water inside actually changed a little bit. It increased a little bit when he did this. So the water warmed up. And he found that if he went a little higher with this weight and dropped it from somewhere up here, then we had more string, more movement of these paddles, more movement of the water. He found that the temperature increased more. So James Prescott Jewell, he was doing work to raise this, uh, this weight up, and then gravity was doing work on that weight to move it downward. And then that work uh, was transferred through this, this system, through this device, into the water, uh, into the paddles, which cause movement of the water. They apply a force to the water. And so indirectly, he's doing work on this water. Now, the water eventually comes to rest, and so you know the, the question was, what happened to that energy? We did this work, and we had motion, we had kinetic energy. Where is it now? Well, it turns out it's in the form of heat, or it, it's energy at the atomic level that we can measure with the temperature of this substance. So he found that work turned into heat, and actually it turns out that the amount of work that, uh, that was done on this water would be exactly equal to the amount of heat um, that this system uh, added. So we might call that delta H. <coughs> Sorry, delta Q. We use Q for heat, not, uh, not H for heat. So we might have a problem then uh, with uh, some stuff we've been working on in, in the mechanics uh, section of this class involving, uh, involving how much heat was generated and basically a conservation of energy problem. So we have a person pushing a block going up a hill or up a ramp. So if we think about the initial and final states here, initially that box is down at the bottom of the ramp. V is zero here, and then in our final state, we've got our box that's moving up the ramp now at 1.5 meters per second. It's up at a height of one meter. And in between, we did work of uh, 35 joules. Uh, so to get from here to here, this person uh, who's pushing the box, they applied um, some force going up the ramp and did 35 joules worth of work. Now there's also going to be friction involved in this problem, and we're not told about the, um, uh, the amount of friction in terms of a coefficient of friction, but we can actually figure that out. We, we could uh, go through that calculation here. Uh, we're just going to look at how much of that energy that, uh, uh, that we put into the system in the form of work, how much of it turned into heat. So initially we start off with no gravitational potential energy. We're at the height of zero. We start off with no kinetic energy. Um, and we put into that 35 joules worth of work. 
So when we do our conservation of energy uh, equation here, we'll say that we started out, well, with nothing, but then we added to it 35 joules. And that's going to equal, uh, let me do this in two steps. So the amount of work we put in is going to be equal to, oh, when it gets up high and it's moving, it's going to have gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy, and then some amount of heat, Q. And that heat actually is not just going to be limited to the box. It's going to be spread out all on the surface and in the box. And, you know, heat tends to spread out quickly, so it doesn't stay there for very long. It spreads even further. Uh, so the amount of work here was 35 joules. Mass time, or sorry, uh, potential energy from gravity is mass times gravity times height. So our mass was 2 kilograms. times the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the height, 1 meter, plus kinetic energy is 1 half, mass, times the velocity squared, oops, plus some amount of heat, Q. So 35 joules is equal to well, 2 times 1 times 9.8, that'd be 19.6 joules. Plus, okay, 1 half times 2 is 1. 1 1.5 squared is 2.25, so 2.25 joules plus Q. So 35 joules is equal to, that must be 20, uh, 22 point, oops, Twenty-one uh, point uh, point eight five there. And my decimal place is switched around plus Q, and then we'll subtract the twenty-one point eight five joules from both sides, and we'll get thirteen point one five joules. Thirteen point one five joules of heat um, in this system now. So again, that's going to be spread out along the ramp and on the box. Uh, now, how much does that change the temperature? You know, how does this equate to degrees or uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius or um, to temperature in Kelvin? Well, we'll get to that a little bit later on. For now, we're going to think of uh, um, think of just the heat and the amount of joules or the, the amount of energy um, in that heat form.